We are going to be taking a look at heartwaychurch.com today. We'll log in as we always have. This is not completely new because a lot of these elements existed already in the old website. We have a few new wrinkles that we want to go over. We're going to go over everything on this side that is at all important to you, but we're going to spend more time on the new things than we are on the old things. So we have post here. We're not using post on this website. If you ever had a blog on this site, then we would use them for that or maybe some other purpose. And the functionality of it is the same as pages though, for the most part. And so we're just going to cover most of those lessons there. And if you ever need to get a blog set up, we can help you with that as well. We have responsive accordion here, and this appears on the home page, And I think I think it might appear on an inside page for you all as well, but it at least appears on the home page here. And so we come down here and getting to know Heartway, then we have our different little categories here and they pop open once you click them. It's very simple to make changes to this, and I believe that we're on our new FAQ over here. You have a title for each one of those things. The title is what shows up right here. Inside of that, we have the accordion description. You don't have to know the code like it's showing there. You can click the use what you see is what you get editor, and then you can do this just like you would on a post or a page or anything else. Once you get what you like, you click OK. You could have a different icon there if you wanted to, but we're using those ones right now on all of them. That would pro probably be reasonable to continue to do. You could change some settings over here on the side, but if you do, it's going to mess with everything. And so it might be good, might be bad. We can't promise one way or the other. You can mess with those things if you want, but the safe place to be is to stick with just changing text. Or if you want to add a new one, you simply click Add New Accordion, and it doesn't add a whole new thing, just one more little, one more little accordion bar here. And you can add as many of those as you want, and you can make a new one if you want to as well. When you make a new one, then it's uh, maybe not having quite all the same settings on it that we have, but you can look through and try to get them about the same. And if you have trouble with that, then you can let us know and we can give you a little help. We have this events plugin here that is on, on our church websites by default these days, but I uh, don't think you all are using that right now. If you decide you want to, let us know. We can help you out with that. We have media down here. Media is not something that you really need to look at very often. You can access these things better through other parts of the website, so there's not much of a need to get into this section, but it's here if you ever need it, and you can see everything that exists on your site that is media. That means documents, uh, photos, videos, anything that you upload here directly. We have forms, and with forms, then we have several different, con uh, several different contact forms, several different uses of this on the site. These are really mostly pretty self-explanatory what happens within here. If you're looking for someone's name, email, and message, and a message from them, then we can come over here to advanced and get their name here. Advanced doesn't mean it's hard for you to use. It just means that, uh, that Gravity Forms that, uh, that we're using here, that it does some special things to make sure that everything is filled out correctly with these different areas. And so you just click it, drag it over, and it will go in that spot. You can make some changes to it few appearance changes that are small, some more advanced things, conditional logic that are very valuable, but not something that is essential for what you're doing. If you ever get to a place where you have questions about that, then we can give you some answers. We're pretty knowledgeable in that area. Now, if you want to create a new form, you click new form, of course. Under settings, we have all these things set up already, but you can make changes to it. Like instead of saying submit at the bottom, you can have something else like go get him tiger, or something like that and confirmations. These pop up after you have submitted a form. You can edit them. They work just like a post or a page. Same idea. And notifications go out to the appropriate people. Right now they're set to go out to the admin, I imagine. Oh, no, uh, info at heartway.church.com is what we have right now. So it'll go out to there, but you can also make it so that then you have a copy go to the email field uh, that someone filled out within there so they could get a copy of this as well. Or depending on what someone answers, then you could make it so that then it goes to one person or another person. You can create additional notifications so it goes out to several different people. Either within the same notification, you can set it up so that it's routing to different people, or you can set up a completely different format for it if you want that as well. You will get these notifications in your email, but they are also um, they will also uh, come into here. And we don't come in and read these or anything, so don't worry, But um, unless you ask us to. And then you can always see them here, though. They're always stored here, and they'll be stored there forever unless you choose to delete them and we don't ever delete them. They don't take up that much space. You might as well leave them there unless they're just cluttering up your life too much. 
the pages, then we have everything on the site is controlled through pages except for the home page. So everything else is done through here. It's very easy to control. You can use this just like a basic word process, a word, word processing type thing, a, a Microsoft Word, things of that nature. You can add in any of these elements up here, add in a photo through inserting media. You can put in one of those accordions like we were looking at earlier. Uh, you don't need to worry about pod short codes. You can insert a form. And then once you do that, it's just that's all there is to it. So if you need to add a form to a page, you click Add Form. You select the form. You insert it. And then it's there, and it's nothing on this page hardly. But then you can preview and see that the form shows up there, just as you want it to. And it's ready to go. Nothing more you need to do to it. All the while, you can click Preview, of course, as, all, uh, of course, as always, and you can update it, and then it becomes live. You see we have the featured image over here, and this is what shows up on top in this spot right up here. With these featured images, then we have, uh, we have them set up at the right sizes right now. If you ever find that you're in a place where you're wanting to add a new featured image, and then you want to have it be that it is a certain part of the image that is focused upon. You can click this little crop image button here. Uh, here we go. And then you can make it so the top featured image is different. And so you can zoom in on one part or another. And you can choose your quality over here. We have our SEO stuff down here as always. You can enter in a keyword and make sure that what you have in there is working well. Several other things you don't necessarily need on there. And if you don't want them to keep showing up, you can check or uncheck them. And once you've clicked update on these, then whatever settings you have will apply in the future until you change them and click update again. If you ever need to add a new page, you come in here, you add it, it's simple enough. You put in the title and some content. And you put in whatever you need. You can put in your media. We can insert these into the page, just like always. We can make everything look wonderfully snazzy. If you want to have a link that is a button, that's something that's new to what we're doing here right now. So you get your link set up just like you always would, linking to, linking to something else. But if we do it as it is right now, then it's just a link. But we want it to be a link that is a button, and so we select it. And then under formats here, then we have several options of what we can do. One of them is we can make it a button. And then what do you know? It's a button. So it's as simple as that. If you want to make this be red text without having to make it look like red text here on the page, it's not terribly relevant at this moment, but it could be in other situations, and you can do it that way. You can also do that with white text, which is more relevant, and we'll see why here in a moment, but we want to take off our red text too. And so we don't want it to be that we are having invisible text as we're editing it, and so we can make it show up like that. We don't want this though, so we move it to the trash. And once things are moved to the trash, then you can go to the trash and you can delete it permanently and then it is gone forever except for it might be in our backup system still. We don't have comments going on the site right now. We do have home page areas and as the name would imply home page areas are areas that are on the home page and so everything that's on this home page here comes from home page areas. You can see that we have those here. Uh, we can go ahead and delete these. These were test ones as we were teaching some people to use this. Notice that these are not in the order that they are on the page. You can reorder them over here by clicking reorder and then move them around as you please. These are so very simple to create though. And that's what's great about what we're doing right now. So let's say we want to add a new one. We're gonna go ahead and do it. And that way we can just see how it works. We'll publish it and we'll take it down pretty quickly. Should be 12.31 a.m. your time. I can't imagine there are many people looking at your website at that time. I was about to say not many people in Miami awake at that time, but they, I'm sure they are awake, but not looking at your website, probably. And so we'll just say test title. And the way that you want to frequently do this, and you can do this as you please, you can put whatever you want in these spots, whatever content you want can work in here, but the way that's going to work out the best for you is if you start off with a header one title. And so then you just 
You can do it after you do the text and select it and make that, or you can click it beforehand, but you make it a header one. Every time you have a header one title, it's going to look big like this stuff here, and that's what you're wanting right now. Go down to the next line, add in the content here. And it might be actual text like this, or it might be that you want to add in a, an accordion, or it might be that you want to have a form. Whatever it is that you want to have in this spot, you put it there. Let's keep it out of form right now, okay? And we have a little bit of text there above it too, and that's fine. And then after that, if, the, if it's reasonable, you might want to have an additional call to action. And that's when you put in a button again, like before. And that's why I said again. And so we link up to google.com. We say we want to make that a button, and all is well in the world. I'm going to publish this real quick. We're going to do some more things to this here in just a moment. There it goes. But first, I want to put it down at the bottom so that we don't have anybody seeing this inadvertently. There we go. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put it up there right now. It's not going to look right, and you'll see You'll see it's not right. See, it's because all the way to the edges, we don't have any image in the, uh, in the background, which we might want. So we come down here, and then we say we want to have a background image of some kind. You don't have to. You can make it just a solid color instead, and that would be perfectly fine. But right now, I want to have a background image of some people touching hands. And then we say it's going to be a little too busy to have this be a, the normal colors and have the text on top of it. So let's put some other color on top of it a little. Let's make it blue. Blue's not really your color in your church, but we're going to do it anyway. And you can make this be all the way at zero, and then the color doesn't show up at all. And at one, then the photo doesn't show up at all. And anywhere in between is in between. We have padding over here. And that just means that then there is going to be some space around everything. And so see how there's space around this? That's because we have padding. And then you see how there's not space around this stuff here. And that's a problem. We can make it so that the background image stays in one place or that it moves along with the text. See how the background image on this just goes right along with that text. The K still stays on that kid's nose the whole time. But over here, you all stay in place while the text goes over you. So, we can make it fixed, we can make it not fixed. We're going to make this one fixed. You can make it extra tall, you can make it extra narrow. You probably don't want to make it extra short and extra tall at the same time. Those are conflicting ideas, and who knows what might happen. It might make the whole website explode. But we have horizontal background position and vertical background position. It changes where the background is, the image is exactly, and it can change it a little bit. It doesn't change it in a massive way. Where you are going to find this the most valuable, though, is on mobile devices. Then getting this in the right spot will change whether it looks right there or not. And if it looks right on mobile, it's still going to look right on the desktop. But looking right on the desktop doesn't mean it's going to look right on mobile. So you can experiment with this, but basically what it ends up meaning is that at 50%, then and if you just leave it on its own, then it's going to just put it at, I think it's at 50% is what it is at de by default. But if you move this over, then it can be at 50, it can be at 60. Basically, it's going to end up being that at this point it's all the way to the left at this point it's all the way to the right and then you can tweak it back and forth to try to get it to that perfect spot the vertical part only changes it a tiny bit on this one i think we only have up to 80 pixels that it can be adjusted and 80 pixels when you're dealing with big background images like this don't amount amount to hardly anything but sometimes that's just enough to make a difference so we're going to update this refresh this page over here and we'll see what we got and there we go. We got that background image there. We got our header. Everything is good in the world. That image was kind of a hefty file size, so it took us some time. Probably wouldn't have been ideal for that. You'll notice, though, that we have this right here, and we've got some gray text that we can't really see. And so what we can do is we can select all this, and we can make it white text. You'll notice it doesn't turn white right here. That's a good thing. We could have done that same thing with the normal color settings up here and it would have worked. But then, you can't see what you got. And that's annoying. 
So we're going to X that out, use the white text, click update, refresh the page. And we didn't get it within this gravity forms thing. Shoot. So we failed on that. But we got it on the top part, and we'll fix it on the other. We'll make sure that works. If you make any changes you need to down here, when you're done, you move it to the trash. And you move on with your life, or you can come over here and delete these permanently. And that way you can really let go. No looking back at this. Don't really use the categories in here. If you want to add a new one, you click here. That's all you need. You don't need Genesis settings. You don't need to do much in appearance. Within widgets, we have a little bit. We got a couple of these things here. And right now we have volunteer and give. And so then we just have our text and we have our button down here. And over here we got our text and we have our button. If you need to make changes to those things, you can do it in here. If you want to change out your logo, you can. If it was at the same dimensions as this, uh, particularly, well, yeah, the same dimensions, um, the same height particularly, then you can change it out here. If you have trouble with that, or really even better, if you want to ask us beforehand, then we can help you out with that, and that would be great. Um, but if you need to make the change and you want to make it on your own, that's okay too. You don't need to change anything under these pod list here. These things we're not using. There they are they are there if we need them, but we don't. Within the footer, then we've got a handful of things. We have the map. And so the map that we've chosen is Heartway. We'll show how to set show you how to set that up really in a moment, but that's how you select it. We've got the address down here underneath it. Then we have our social media icons. If you just enter in the address of your social media network onto any of these, then it will add it automatically. The colors are already set up. Of course, you can change those colors if you want to. And then we have a menu down at the bottom of the page as well. We have plugins over here. If you need to add new functionality, you can. You can try that out on your own. You're probably going to be better off normally checking in with us, and we're happy to help you out with that. We have users over here, and right now we have three users. This one doesn't need to exist anymore. Once upon a time, he did. But it's time to move on. And then we have Danny, Prada, and we have me-ish. It's multiple people use my login, but uh, it is my picture there. Just that vein. You can add a new person over here. It's simple to do. You put in the username, the email, the first name, the last name, um, website if you want to. The big thing here is the password. It would be wonderful if you would use a strong password. It can be the crazy one that's here, or it can be one that's made up, but we don't want you to type out password and have it be that. You can click this button here and confirm the use of the weak password, but it means your website's vulnerable, and bad things can happen to it. And if it's from a weak password, that's really disappointing. It's not something we want to see. It's not something you want to see. So have a good password. You can experiment with this until it tells you that you at least have a medium, okay? Um, that's where we want to be at at least. And so then a crazy PW, there we go, we got something there. But you could also just go Danny Paprata exclamation point dash dash. You know, you can make it something that's a little bit easier to, easier to recognize for you. See, look at that. That's memorable. You can remember that. That's not too crazy. You can change it over here to being something other than an administrator, but normally that's what you want. You can email the person when you do it so they know what's going on. That's how you add users. That's how you manage users. Now, we have tools, and there are actually tools in your site, but not ones that matter for you right now. We have settings, a few general settings you can make a change to. None of them really make much of a difference to what you're doing. If you find anything that does, that's fine, and you can work through it. With the SEO things here, you can look through this if you want to perfect your website for SEO purposes. There's some settings you can change that could be helpful to you, maybe. Uh, it doesn't apply to you a ton. If you have questions about that, let us know. We have Slider Revolution here. And Slider Revolution is important to your site. It's the slideshow that is at the top of your site. So it does matter. We come in here, this is the slideshow we have set up right now. Now, Slider Revolution can be used to do anything you could ever imagine with a website. And we want to try to keep it mostly simple right now. 
Um, but it is a little bit complicated. I mean, it does amazing things. There's a lot to learn. We definitely can't teach it all right now, but we want to show you a few basic things, okay? So these all have background images, right? And then that's done through the main slash background image. You can make it a solid color. You can put a video in the background, whatever you want. You can get it from the media library here and just select whatever image you want to be there in the background. And we've chosen the ocean in this one because you all are in close proximity to the ocean. And over here, you can make some changes to this about exactly what you want to do with your images. We can set up this Ken Burns stuff. Ken Burns means to zoom in and out um, on a photo so that it looks more like a video type thing going on. And so we're going from 112% zoom to 106. And we're rotating a little bit. We're, can, we can move the background position so that then it will uh, change a little bit. I guess it's not showing it up there in that one right now. But down here it was changing it. And you can mess with that until you get it just right or you don't have to if you don't want to. We have an object library here, all sorts of little graphics and some stock images you can put inside there. Click on it, add it in, it goes in, put it on the page. We've got this here. This is a graphic that you all sent us. We put it in the middle of the page. You do that by going to add layer. You can add any of these layers, images, text, buttons, shapes, objects. You can import them from another slide, whatever you want. And you put them then on the page and then they are there. And you can move these things around wherever you want them to be. You can center them up, which is a wonderful thing to do. It makes it much easier to control. Down here we have the timeline of when things are coming in. And along with that, then we have this animation that we choose up here. You just choose what you want, whatever you think looks good. You go with it. You can change the time. You can have some more advanced settings down in here and they can change all sorts of things that happen on there, and they can do amazing things. You can also make it so that some objects are only visible at certain levels, we have this being visible at every level. But then on this particular site, or this particular slide rather, then we have these parts here, and these are some extra words that we don't want on the rest of the time because the text is large enough. But you see this over here, you can look at how it appears in different sizes. When we get down to mobile phone size, I'm concerned that people won't be able to read what's on there. And so I added in this text, and it will be on there then too. At any point, you can preview the animation here, and it shows what happens with it. And that wasn't the animation we had originally, so it didn't look quite as good. You can also preview the slide in a better context over here. You can see what it will look like on these different devices. If you're satisfied with what you've done, you click Save, and it becomes Live. Let's say you want to have a button on here, though. That's one more thing we need to cover. You select what you want down here with your text or with an image or with anything else. And then you go up to Actions. Click this little plus here. When they click, you want it to be that there is a simple link. And so then you put in the link URL, and it can go wherever you want it to go. You can make it the same window or a different window. It's probably better to go with an A tag link, but you will go on either way. Make whatever changes you want to make here and everything should be lovely. I'm going to refresh this and make sure that I haven't inadvertently done anything I don't want to do. It's better to be safe. Yep, we're good. Okay, we have all these slides up here. You can add a new slide by clicking it here. You can also duplicate a slide, which might be a great option at times, so then that way you can take advantage of work that's already been done by someone else or by yourself at a different time. You can delete slides completely like this. You can also deactivate them by clicking these little red icons here or activate them by clicking the green ones. You can make any other changes on here that you need to make. There are some settings for the overall slideshow here and you don't really need to mess with any of them, but you can. You can make changes on whether there are arrows to be able to click to move around or not. You can change some defaults on the slides change your parallax levels and set some cool scroll effects. Quite a few options. Most of them won't be too relevant. You can create new slideshows as many as you want. And there are some amazing things you can do through feeds with all of these other social media services. But we won't cover that right now because it's not implemented on your site. If you decide you want to look into that, we can try to help you out some. Now we have WP Google Map down here. And it's really very simple. This doesn't do you any good to click on that button, but I always do it by mistake anyway. If you want to add a new location, you click Add New Location. You enter in the title of where you want it, what you want it to be. 
and we're gonna go to Flatbush, Brooklyn, New York, by Lenny and John's Pizza, and then all this stuff is filled in automatically for you once you get that address, so you don't need to know all that information. You can have it be that there's a little window that pops up when you click on it, or you can make it be that when they click on it, it redirects to something else. Then you click Save if you want it to be live. You can also make there be a marker category for Heartway Church. If you already have a map in place that you want to add a new location to, then you go to Manage Maps, or you can add a whole new map. Title it, give it a width. If you leave it blank, it'll be 100%. Set a height, zoom level. You can just experiment with those things and see what looks right. You're always going to want to go with turn off scrolling wheel for the zooming because you don't want to be scrolling up and down the screen and then suddenly you're stuck in that map. It's the most annoying thing. You can turn on and off all these different things, select which location you want to appear, make any adjustments you want to make, click save. Now there are two different ways to implement this on the website. You can come over here and copy the short code and you paste it into any post or page, but you can also do it within widgets like we saw before. And then there is a widget specifically devoted to maps and it is called WP Google Map Plugin. You put it wherever you want it to be, you select the map you want, click save and it becomes live. And that is the new heartwaychurch.com. If you have questions, let us know. We're happy to help you out with any needs that you have and you can always get in touch with David and if he has needs that uh, if you have needs that go beyond his abilities, then I will help out or Becca will help out and we will make sure that you have whatever you need.